Hey everyone, I just want to give you an update or where we are with our home project. For those of you who may not know, the wife and I are in the process of selling our home and buying another one. Well, before we sell our home, we want to put a new roof on it. We want to do some painting, get everything nice and fresh. We want to rip out some carpet and put some tile down. The problem is, is we can't do any of that until we get the roof replaced. And we can't get the roof replaced until we get a few days of dry weather. But where I live, we have been getting rain. We get a couple of days without rain, a couple of days with rain. The problem is it doesn't dry out enough to store on the roof. And then by the time it does, you got it, more rain. And so it's been crazy trying to get everything boxed up and put in storage. We're going to stage the house, you know, get the biggest bang for your buck. Want it to look nice when someone comes in. Anyway. I cannot wait to get back to my regular schedule. I know it's been a bit wonky the past few weeks. I apologize for that. I really love doing this. It helps me to relax. It helps me get my mind off of everything. So now would be the best time, but don't always have time to do it. Between my bank, between the mortgage company, which is normal. I expected all that stuff. <sighs> but let's get back to the channel here. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and leave me a comment down below. It really helps the channel out, and I do appreciate it. So with all of that being said, let's begin today's story. I'm recording here for you my final memory. I sincerely hope that you can read it. I just started at the cafe, and as part of my training, I was being clued in to all the regulars. It seemed to be as much as my training curriculum as table manners or side work, and a great importance was being placed on it by the girl currently training me, Megan. Saturday morning is Mr. Frank. He's a pain in the ass, and he'll nurse a cup of drip coffee at the counter table during the brunch rush and not give a shit. Megan continued on. Doesn't leave a tip either, bastard. Then, there's Miss Blevins. She's a daily. She'll actually be here pretty soon, she said, eyeing the clock above the bar. She doesn't say much, but she's been coming here for a couple of weeks now and always gets the same thing, a bowl of chicken soup and a croissant. She brings this ancient notebook, and it's always hovering over it. Tip's decent. Oh, actually, there she is now. The bell on the door chimed as the presumed Mrs. Blevins slid in. She looked unremarkable at first. Mid to late forties, I guessed. Straw blonde hair pulled back into a ponytail, and no matter the day, she was always wearing the same beige cardigan. Megan wasn't exaggerating about her notepad, either. The thing was definitely ancient, cracked the cover and the pages were the color of yellow that made it clear that it had been white at some point. Megan sent me over because she said that Miss Blevins was an easy customer and a good one to start on. What can I get for you? I asked, readying my notepad to take her order. Her notebook lay open beside her, but it looked odd. There were various symbols and scribbles across the page in no meaningful pattern. The figure of a tree was drawn into the bottom corner with long branches stretching out across the pages. I felt the headache coming on purely from the strain of trying to take it all in. She raised an eyebrow at me when she saw where my eyes had fallen. What do you see? She asked. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pry. I replied, flustered. All I knew is that I really didn't want to keep talking about what I'd seen. The images began to blur when I thought about them too hard. She continued to look at me as if she was studying me. After a long pause, she smiled wearily and closed the notebook with finality. My usual, please. I hurried back to the kitchen, eager to sit down and shut my eyes that were now aching. Megan saw me collapse onto a stool and came over. Are you okay? Don't worry. I put her order in when I saw her come in. Did she yell at you or something? You look awful, she said. 
No, uh, she didn't yell. I replied weakly. I guess I just got a migraine or something. I was looking at her notebook, and she caught me. So, yeah, she might be a little ticked, but I think it's fine. Oh, that stupid notebook. Megan rolled her eyes. Did she give you the whole spiel about invisible ink and all that bullshit? If she's so worried about a HIPAA violation, or whatever, maybe don't do your therapy notes in a public cafe. What? Didn't she tell you? I asked her one time why she always brings an empty notebook in here, and she said it wasn't actually empty. She's a therapist or something, and writes her notes like at a weird angle, or uses weird ink or something so she could look at them in public without anyone else seeing them. I don't know, Megan shrugged and eyed me. So, are you good? I've got another table for you. Also, don't hang out back here too much, or back a house will get pissy. Megan left, but I stayed frozen to the stool. The pages clearly weren't blank when I saw them, and if those were therapy notes, then I had no idea what kind of therapy she was doing. I spent the rest of my shift thinking it over, while Miss Blevins nursed an Earl Grey at her table, surreptitiously watching me. She hadn't opened the notebook again since we talked. I tried to rationalize it, thinking maybe she had some kind of special shorthand, or she was doing like a family tree or something, but I couldn't shake the dizziness that seemed to come over me when I'd looked at the page and all of its weird symbols and scratching. Finally, it was time to close, and that's when I saw that at some point Miss Blevins had slipped out. She'd left exact change on the table, no tip. She'd also left the notebook with a napkin on top of it where she scribbled only that which encompasses humanity and nothing else. I still didn't know why, but I slipped it into my backpack and took it home with me that night. Maybe it was just so weird I couldn't resist. Thinking back on it, I do feel bad now. Megan tried her best to train me, and my shift wasn't half bad. But I'd never stepped foot in that cafe again, not since I'd gotten the notebook. The notebook began with a letter that I will transcribe here. Hello. If you're reading this letter, then you are now in possession of this notebook. You cannot get rid of it, although you are welcome to try. It will continue to return to you until it finds its next link in its chain. Many cannot read this notebook and will not understand. It is foolish to get others to try. You have been chosen for a reason and that reason may only be known to you or no one at all. It is your duty to deposit your knowledge here. Your sacrifice has been recognized. I would rolled my eyes the first time I read it. It felt so needlessly dramatic and over the top from the plain woman in the beige cardigan. I flipped to the next couple of pages and saw pages filled with cramped writing in red ink. It looked like it began with basic biographies of people, info like birthdays, blood type, favorite colors, then it devolved into more of symbols and scribbles that I'd seen at the cafe. My eyes began to blur, and the same ache that I'd felt before came back with a vengeance. Finally, I'd flipped to seemingly blank pages, and my vision relaxed, but only for a moment. I felt a sharp pain in my palm, and watched as words appeared on the page in red ink. Date of birth, 12-14-1989. Blood type, O positive. Favorite color, green. Social skill, introverted. I yelped and threw the notebook across the room where it lay flat and the words continued to appear on the page. 
my vision blurred and eventually faded to black. I awoke the next day to the notebook lying in the same spot, but with pages upon fresh pages of new writing. I flipped through it frantically, trying to figure out what in the hell was going on. Avoidant Attachment Six Sexual Partners Words Per Minute 97 Left-Handed Crooked Smile Seemingly inane information flooded the pages before me, and the longer I looked at it, the more the foreign information became. I had the memory that maybe it was describing me, but the information no longer felt correct. Had that been me? I couldn't remember. To be honest, I can't remember now. The information has changed now. The pages are only ever filled with one repeating word or another. Scared. 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 Tired. Scared. Scared. I can't remember anything before that first day at the cafe. I can't tell you my name or where I grew up or even what color my eyes are. I used to be scared, I think. But now I'm only tired. I think I'm done now, but it won't let me go without more information. Do I have more information to give it? It doesn't feel that way. Can you read this? Do you have information to give? <laughs>